Rain World is rather unique. I'd even go as far as to say there isn't a single game that is remotely similar, and God knows I've tried to find one. Seriously. And no Steam, just because it has a silly little white critter does not mean it counts. This one-of-a-kind experience is likely how Rain World has built up such an adoring community, all of whom are constantly craving more that unmatched Rain Worlding. So, it's only natural that some of said community would set out to construct that content themselves with flesh, blood, and cold, hard code. The very act of modding in games is often seen as one of the largest factors in extending a game's lifespan, right alongside fueling egos and gambling. Naturally, Rainworld is no stranger to the modding scene. However, the past method of installing mods was some ancient, archaic process of uh, manually downloading mod files and using a third-party modding software. But with the release of version 1.9 alongside the predominantly community-made Downpour DLC came the addition of Rainworld mods to the Steam Workshop, allowing a plethora of modded content to be just one click away. Or maybe two or three clicks, depending on dependencies, but you get the message. So without further delay, let's journey into the weird and wonderful world of Rainworld modding. As any poor soul stumbling into the workshop for the first time might notice, a common dependency among quite a few mods is Dress My Slug Cat, which is an excellent base for providing only the highest quality of cosmetic flair and pizzazz to make your little beast one of a kind. And there's some truly stunning styles to choose from, such as mimicking the classically colorful creatures already occupying the varied and vast regions within this rainy world, even those found within the depths and even deeper still. But there's also some more unique ideas. Who the hell delimbed my damn cat slug? Some of which should never have seen the light of day. A moga. The best part is you could make your own cosmetics with ease in like Microsoft Paint or something. Not me though, I'm creatively inept. The act of trying to visualize an apple actually materializes a black hole in my skull. Oh, oh no, I'm thinking about it. Oh god, the apple. Oh fuck. The existence of mods means there will naturally be some insane individuals that aim to improve and make the experience easier for many players of various skill groups, like granting a second brain cell to the chemical huffing deer rabbit creatures so they finally know left from right, or WD 40ing the gears of the gates, prolong the lifespan to the little snail in your ear that whispers cryptic instructions to you, get a better understanding of big boys, small stamina or simply remove it to create lore-accurate gourmand. Put that pearl right back into that hole in your chest. Y yikes. Tired of only having three directions to throw your spears? Wait, what's that asterisk there for? N no, that doesn't count. Well, how about eight directions? Still not sold? Then I'll throw in an extra 360 degrees. Absolutely free. Maybe go the extra mile and have a fully customizable lock-on system for precise and accurate rebar relocation. And just because Hunter has ultra cancer doesn't mean they should get special treatment. Behold, the true Spearmaster. Don't like getting jumped as soon as you step into the next screen? Take a quick peek so you're not caught unaware. Better yet, simply escape the confines of this grid-like camera system. Finally, this harsh world can revolve around the slug cat. And why settle for swimming through this filthy, cloudy mess? Run that H2O through a multi-step water treatment facility to get crystal clear Dasani water. Then sell it back to the local ecosystem for an exorbitant price. What's that? The wildlife is going on strike. If they don't want my premium mineral water, then that's exactly what they'll get. Form peaceful relations with the bloodthirsty blades of grass and gain safe passage through the field. But that's not good enough, is it? These glorified lawns need to be shown their place, and that place is ripped up from the dirt and mulched. Do these still even count as quality of life mods? Mm, fuck if I know, unshades your citadel, idiot. Now this 
is the beginning of the true meat of modding. The slippery critters, the nimble little beasts, the slug of cats. Some of these new additions to the roster might introduce new bits of movement to utilize, or perhaps a unique way of inflicting more violence on the local wildlife. Maybe it's both of those things at the same time. The best part is seeing how different modders go about fulfilling similar goals. For example, this one flies. This one also flies in its own, uh, special way. Lastly, this one flies, is a vegetarian, and also does this. Why should death be the end of the journey when it could be the beginning of a beautiful, parasitic relationship? What about becoming a genuine cowboy, using your trusty lasso spear to conquer the strongest of foes before turning their flesh into a hat and wearing it? Silk Song. We have Silk Song at home. Hmm, my eyes are feeling a bit dry. Your eyes are getting dry too? Why don't you pull them out? Pull out your eyes. You don't need to see. It'll spare you the pain of having to comprehend the horrors surrounding you. Of course, some slugcats go above just gameplay changes, introducing entire cutscenes and brand new lore to uncover. And in this case, way too many mechanics and a very intelligent child to care for. Gather a variety of pearls, each of which provide a unique ability like shooting things, double jumping, or resurrecting the deceased. This one's special ability is crashing my game. Then there's the Drone Master, who may not live up to the name at first, but will quickly grow a fleet to command as karma levels rise. Journey up to the city in the clouds while researching many species along the way. Prove yourself to not be outdone by a certain explosive slug cat when it comes to scavenger slaughtering while experiencing the occasional flashback of your own iterator back home to learn how you came to be. Then finally, study the chieftain's decaying remains and climb up the dizzying heights of the communication array to relay what you've learned. And now, it's time for a radical little fella. He was a skater boy. He said, get out my chamber boy. God, that sucks. <laughs> Grinding rails, doing sick tricks, vandalism, littering, and a killer set of shades. This slug cat has it all. Traverse the regions with these soapy skates while making sure to leave an artistic mark on every flat surface in the vicinity, including the ability to make your own custom decals, if that, uh, fits your fancy. But there's only so many regions to leave vandalized, I mean colorfully decorated, without permission. If only there was a way to introduce even more regions like through modifications or something. The world of Rain World is already constructed with an expansive assortment of different regions, most of which are quite good. Some of which are so good in fact that the modern community have taken it upon themselves to expand this goodness, adding upwards of hundreds of new rooms to explore and traverse in already existing regions. Why anyone in their right minds would want double the drainage is beyond me, but we've all got our guilty pleasures. Oh, and this little mod right here spices up all those dole and drab shelters so you can sleep in luxury. Now then, on to regions of the custom variety. And variety there is. Be that exploring lush green swamplands full of flourishing wildlife and vegetation, Long abandoned structures and railways along the coast, caught up in a heavy downpour with creatures seeking shelter among the shipping containers, and, um, hell? Yeah, this is definitely just straight up hell. At least the terrifying firebirds can't reach the lower area. What about a strange lighthouse located far out into dark and murky ocean waters, while the most mysterious secrets can be found deep beneath the waves? Wait, that sounds kind of familiar. There's even sun-bleached buildings stretching far up into the sky with an overflowing scavenger population atop a certain iterator with a multi-pebble moniker. Thinking that kind of just sounds like Metropolis? Well, maybe it does, but that doesn't mean it can't offer a unique experience in terms of visuals and layout to enjoy compared to what was added in Downpour. Something else added with Downpour was increasing the different points along the Rain World timeline, which some custom regions have taken full advantage of. 
like the aforementioned Scorched District, having its once dead and dry interior early on in the timeline turned lush and vibrant with exotic plants as the passage of time persists or a certain stormy coast not quite living up to its name at this point in time. Naturally, the largest of changes often comes during the saint's journey, who exists in a not-so-rainy world, surrounded by glistening white snow that is as beautiful as it is dangerous, and there's no region that does this better than coral caves, a sprawling system of vast subaquatic caverns adorned with colorful coral and the winding mazes of tubes and tunnels of an ancient water network form this region. But what happens when the facilities fail? And the temperature drops, when the once vibrant coral can't survive the icy chill and the water's surface is reduced to nothing more than a frozen plain for a fuzzy little saint to cross. The same goes for the mast, a massive structure not unlike our mostly friendly, highly intelligent toasters, though in this case it's a large transmission spire that towers over marshy wetlands. Being so useful for communication even makes it an alternative ending point for the little spear master, assuming you can brave the climb. Unfortunately, we know firsthand that time isn't so kind to these colossal constructions. Twisted metal and collapsed frozen steel is all that's left, but there are still secrets to be found within these remains. Unique pearls and echoes are commonplace within many of the previously mentioned custom regions, from deep within the watery depths to high up into the frosted skies. And that's not all these regions might bring to the table, as a new location can only mean new creatures, and it would be uncharacteristic if they weren't overflowing with bloodlust. Take, for example, the Hanging Gardens, a gorgeous collection of greenhouse-like structures carved and crafted from stone and brick containing both fauna and flora alike. Snaking stems to climb and powerful gusts of wind makes traveling through this region quite a fun and unique experience and its lovely visuals are only further enhanced with a fresh layer of powdery white snow. One creature to be found within these gardens is a variant of the centipedes, one which favors peace and thus will commit acts of violence to keep said peace. Another commonly spotted threat would be the silver lizard, basically an oversized green lizard and quite slow, usually. There's the hordes of polywogs in the coral caves, and of course, who could forget the pesticide spiders that employ chemical warfare to hunt and kill inferior spider species. W wait, the what? Far shore is the region in which these abhorrent arachnids reside, though they're not too bad, assuming you don't touch their… eggs? This raises a lot of questions. The region itself isn't too dissimilar to the outer expanse, seeming foreign and almost alien compared to this world's usual sights and scenery, even more so with the cobweb-covered caverns crawling with spiders. Definitely a good place to seek shelter as it at least seems to remain quite cozy, even when the surface is frozen over. There is one place though that such frigid weather likely won't ever reach, being deep within the depths of an active volcano. Yet deeper still into these depths lies a surprising secret, though not all slugcats will be lucky enough to experience it. Then there's another region, found to the far east of Five Pebbles structure. Deserted wasteland is… pretty big. Honestly, too damn big. And this isn't even an up-to-date render. Thankfully, the name really says it all. A dry, desolate, desert wasteland. Except for the advanced ancient technology beneath the surface, the structures towering up into the sky, access to a fresh supply of unfiltered void stew, a crumbling series of abandoned train lines swimming through radioactive ooze from a decaying nuclear reactor, not to mention enough death pits, multiple challenging jumps, and an entire dedicated section for worming that could easily drive the most sane man to the brink, even with the certified crack cat. This is hell, and did I mention the still somewhat operational research center of sorts packed full of lizards, the rot, and lots of swimming sections where drowning is all but guaranteed. Overall, not for those lacking resolve. The resolve to die repeatedly. On another note, not all regions offer the chance to explore an entire small country instead giving passage between different regions, be that vanilla or modded, which is greatly appreciated and is deserving of equal praise and recognition. Now then, much like Cola's secret ingredient of straight-up crack, any respectable modern community is riddled with, and I say this with great affection, straight fucking nonsense.
And what better place to start this section off than with the first mod to ever grace the Rain World Steam Workshop. A creative and ambitious region, a finely crafted slug hat featuring incredible movement and combat prowess, even better, it's this. I'm not reading that, not for my dignity, but for my sanity. Doesn't fit your taste? Don't worry. Psychic damage comes in different flavors, but why stop at just sight, when you've got perfectly good hearing that could also be ruined? There's no shortage when it comes to sound effects, so simply pick your poison, as regardless of the choices made, it'll lead to a wonderfully horrible experience. Speaking of experiences, ever found yourself experiencing starvation while surrounded by nothing but rocks and rubble? Why not take a page out of the ancients' holy scriptures and consume the gravel? But why stop at just that? Consume any and everything that you can get your hands on. And if that's not enough, just further expand what those tiny little hands can grab. But be careful not to overeat, as it might have some unexpected downsides, oh. and perhaps even benefits. Taking a step back to those rocks you just swallowed, what if they just so happened to perfectly match the chemical makeup of a hydrogen bomb? And further still, any explosion is granted the ability to carve chunks out of the very regions that you traverse. Oh man, I sure hope nothing happens to my precious, highly volatile bob collection. The death and destruction only continues, granting Saint his full, biblically accurate potential, allowing for rapid and efficient spreading of those good old Christian values. Enjoy using mostly modern methods for eliminating any hostiles that had the misfortune of entering the sights of a global elite going godlike on DM underscore garbage wastes. Maybe instead partake in the highest form of combat, beating the brain matter out of anything within arm's length, with fists tempered like hot steel in the coldest of climates further enhanced by following the age-old adage of you are what you eat, allowing these lethal weapons to be imbued with different effects depending on the content of the slug cat's stomach pouch. It's hip to fist bees. No, wait, I've got some bad news. Did you know not all mods were created equal? That's right, some were created with pure malice and unfiltered agony in mind. How can I truly convey just how much suffering some mods can really inflict? Well, how about starting with a region that I just so happen to forget to cover? Welcome to Slug King. It's exactly how it sounds. A region located almost entirely on the Y-axis and packed full of nothing but jumps, jumps, and also jumps. Ironically, it doesn't require too much complex movement, relying on the repetition of jumps and the cost of failure to inflict its suffering. But on the bright side, you'll be damn good at flips by the time you reach the top. If you reach the top. Do you find yourself overwhelmed by all the things moving on screen and wishing you were less informed? Well, now what you see is what you get. And don't worry, here's another mod to make things even worse. Here's a hint. This isn't Shaded Citadel. It's Sky Islands. How about giving this already suffering poor little critter brittle bones? What exactly does that mean? Well, you see... Oh. Oh no. Just, uh... Be, be careful when you jump. Or better yet, just don't jump at all. Alright, let's see. Next up on the suffering is... Whoa, is that Rain World YouTuber? Turtle... That's right, it's Nextbots from Gmod. In Rain World, modding is truly a beautiful yet cursed gift. Don't feel satisfied with getting chased by a cute little cat? Don't worry, you can easily replace the picture with something more up-to-date and trendy. Please laugh. Next up is swapping out all creatures with their stronger, more superior variants. You like the color red? No? Shame. Spawning a bunch of powerful creatures is actually an excellent segue into the next section, or subsection of suffering, that I like to call... I've no doubt you can already piece together the content of this section by title alone, so I'll save the explanation and get right into it. Since actions speak louder than words, and there is no act louder than the cries of agony a slug cat makes as it's crushed under the weight of 20 drop wigs.
And I'd like to bring special attention to two different mods, the first of which truly puts the rain into this world, allowing for a customizable experience of the miracle of life raining down from above. Naughty little saints get put into the turtle tumbler. And the other mod brings the wonders of science into this world through mite doses, making it so even the slightest bit of damage will cause creatures of your choice to replicate themselves, slowly building into a wave of impending death. My personal advice would be to be careful with bees, as the results aren't pretty. That's a lot of lizards, and therefore many sets of teeth. Did you know each lizard color has a different numerical chance to instantly kill you when it bites? There's even a mod to remove that very mechanic. But why would anybody do such a thing? Isn't that the thrill of playing the odds, betting on chance and hoping things go in your favor? Risking it all on probability. That's why I have a severe addiction to games. Humorous little title card aside, this section is all about playing with random chance. Like this mod where every single frame there's a 0.001% chance to explode. Given the previous section's content, we're no strangers to changing out the creature spawns. But why not also leave that choice up to pure RNG? Completely randomizing whatever might crawl out from those dens come a new cycle. Maybe it'll be funny. Maybe the roll of the dice decides you didn't need to progress any further anyways. Or maybe Lady Luck has a personal vendetta against both you and your PC. My only words of wisdom would be to avoid any region populated with an abundance of leeches. Now, it'd be a shame to let these mindless pieces of goat have all the fun with random numbers. Falling asleep in a safe and cozy shelter only to wake up in a completely new body sounds very cool and not at all grounds for an existential crisis. Even if the slug can't you've awoken as makes traversing the environment you currently find yourself in less than ideal, if not downright impossible. Getting to experience different points along the timeline and the regions that come with it as different little critters is fun, and it even supports most modded slunk ads. Now then, speaking of those regions, don't they seem a little too put together? Just a bit too consistent and logical? Well, fear not, because that's all about to change, possibly for the better, but mostly for the worse. Introducing a highly customizable mod that allows the once perfectly normal and intact regions to be mixed up and spit out into a new abstract art of which these poor little slug cats must now traverse. But don't worry, it can and will get even worse. Taking multiple regions and combining them together, creating incomprehensible mazes of rooms and corridors that are nigh impossible to map out mentally. And that's before adding in modded regions to this mixing pot of geographic malpractice. Yet somehow worse still is this act of blending regions together can be set to happen every single cycle. Meaning you'll wake up in the morning in an unfamiliar place in a stranger's body with different creatures inhabiting these new rooms surrounding you. Doesn't that sound like a total blast? Though not all bouts of chance need to be quite so chaotic. This one just adds shiny fruit that's more fulfilling and a shiny lizard here or there. That's neat, right? So anyways, here's quite possibly the most chaotic mod to ever grace the Rainworld modding scene. Rainworld, Chaotic Edition, introduces the Wheel of Wonders and Wickedness, spun at regular intervals to determine which random event will inflict either joy or suffering onto this poor, unsuspecting victim. With such standard examples as hard drugs, Retro gaming. Unplanned parenthood. The rot will ceaselessly consume until not remains. Planned child abandonment. A gun. Hey, remember that mod that was just covered that mixed up a region's rooms and made traversing it a nightmare? Well, this is that, but against your will. And much, much more fun activities to enjoy to the fullest. Now then, I believe it's finally time to finish things off with the final section. Which I, uh, didn't really have a concrete way of organizing or anything, it's just what's left, you know? No, really. How am I to even begin categorizing a mod that just straight up adds Pong and also break out to Five Pebbles Chamber? Or its accompanying mod featuring fucking Flappy Bird of all things?
Why, yes, that is a highly customizable mod that makes your enemies bleed. Thank you for inquiring. While we're implementing mechanics from other games, why not introduce some moves from everyone's favorite lovable plumber? Sonic the Hedgehog, and this is a spear that can be supercharged to deal more damage at the cost of one sustenance. On the topic of food, here's a mod that converts the food bar into a health bar, granting the little slug ants more durability, as long as they're well fed. It goes without saying that a rotund ball of mass like the Gourmand benefits greatly from this, becoming even more of a walking tank than he already was. Might as well beef up this beefy boy even more, allowing him to utilize his brick wall physique to convert any small creature he can get his hands on into a blunt projectile, yeeting it at the opposition. Another downpour slug cat deserving of some extra utility is the Spearmaster, and what better way than to allow it to produce a new needle that'll brainwash and manipulate whatever creature it impales, allowing complete control of that creature's actions. Of course, it's all fun and games until your main body is consumed and you're forced to permanently inhabit this lizard's now dying form. Really though, there's no need for all this parasitic puppetry when befriending these lizards is a much healthier option for all parties involved. And then they can be ridden into battle, like a majestic, scaly steed. And finally, to really get into that holiday spirit, dear god, I hope I can get this video out before the end of December, here's just a couple mods that'll fill you with Christmas cheer, and fill the creatures of Rainworld with tasty candy canes, which can either be ingested or dissolved directly into the bloodstream via the brand new hole punctured into their flesh. So open those gifts and have a holly, jolly holiday season. Oh, that's weird, it looks like I missed one more mod right here. Well, let's see what it does. Wow, can't believe you sat through my epic top 10 Minecraft mods of the week video. Which definitely wasn't just an excuse to indulge in a bunch of Rain World mods. There's also plenty of mods in the workshop that I didn't end up covering, including things like custom music and an entire multiplayer section of this video that got cut. Not because I don't have friends, I, I have friends, who'd you hear that from? If you're curious about what's being developed or maybe interested in developing your own mods for Rainworld, I suggest checking out the official Discord where you'll get to see tons of cool mods, regions especially, being worked on, and weep knowing you likely won't see them release for another year or two. And apparently the modded wiki is in desperate need of assistance, or so I've heard. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, leak, and subscribe. Stop that. It's overstated's welcome.